Hi everyone, this is Mavic Pua, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the ideal gas equation and graph sketching. Now under the topic of gaseous state, there is one equation which is very important, which is the ideal gas equation. Now ideal gas equation is given by this expression, PV equals to nRT. Essentially, this is the only formula we need in gaseous state. And let's go through each of these terms part by part. P is for pressure. And the unit for pressure is in Pascal. Then V is the volume. The unit for volume, it has to be in meter cube. N is the number of mole. Number of mole, of course, will just be in terms of mole. R is the gas constant. Now gas constant, this value is actually found in the data booklet. It's given by this value, 8.31. And the unit is joule per kelvin per mole. Then finally, we have T for temperature. T unit is in kelvin. So essentially, this is the ideal gas equation. When we want to do calculations involving PV equals to nRT, what is very important is I have to convert everything into SI unit. Pressure must be in terms of Pascal. Volume must be in terms of meter cube. Number of mole is in number of mole, obviously. R, usually we just use the value 8.31. T has to be in terms of Kelvin. So if questions give us non-SI unit, then we need to convert all this into SI unit, substitute into this big equation, PV equals to nRT. Usually there's an unknown, and we try to solve for that unknown. Now for this video, instead of doing calculation questions involving ideal gas equation, what we are more interested in is graph sketching. Usually in questions, what they'll give us is certain conditions. So we have to try to pick up these conditions and we see which terms are constant. Because I do guess equation PV equals to nRT, there are quite a number of terms. So usually if I want to draw a graph for an ideal guess under certain conditions, usually certain terms are constant. So we have to try to look out for them, which are the terms that are constant. Then later, we want to lump the constant terms together. So we will have a few examples, all at constant temperature. So for a fixed mass of an ideal gas, I want to sketch the graphs of the first part, part A, pressure against volume at constant temperature. So this is our Boyle's law. Now Boyle's law, we have another law, which is the Charles law. We don't need to memorize them independently. We just combine all these laws together, then it will just be the ideal gas equation. So if you remember ideal gas equation, PV equals to nRT, essentially we can handle the other laws that we have, Boyce law, Charles law. So what we want to do is, if I want to plot a graph of pressure against volume, basically I just rewrite the ideal gas equation in terms of Y equals to MX, which is essentially a technique for graph sketching. If I want to work out the relationship between X and Y, so I'll have to write out the equation in terms of y equals to mx. Based on the relationship, I can figure out whether it is a straight line passing through origin or it is an inverse graph. And we can deduce all this based on the outcome. So if I want to determine in this case for part A, pressure against volume at constant temperature, we start off with the ideal gas equation, PV equals to nRT. Then we find the terms which are constant. Fixed mass of an ideal gas, if the mass is a constant, then the molar mass of the ideal gas has to be a constant. So therefore, number of mole will be a constant. Gas constant obviously is a constant term. Temperature given in this case is a constant. So therefore, nRT is a constant term. PV will be equal to a constant term. Then, I want to write this in terms of pressure against volume. So P will be on the left hand side as the Y coordinate. V will be the x-coordinate. I bring volume on the right-hand side. I can write this as pressure equals to a constant term multiplied by 1 over V. So from this expression, we can see that pressure against volume, the relationship is an inverse relationship. So it will be an inverse graph. Basically, when I plot a graph of pressure against volume, this is the inverse graph that we will be getting. Of course, if I'm plotting volume against pressure, the shape of the graph is effectively the same. 
Now next one is I'm required to plot a graph of pressure against 1 over volume at constant temperature. Now temperature is a constant so it is essentially the same as what we have done previously. PV equals to NRT, NRT is a constant, PV is a constant. And if I bring volume over to the right hand side of the equation, pressure is equal to a constant term multiplied by 1 over V. If I'm plotting pressure against volume, then pressure is inversely related to volume. But if I'm plotting pressure against 1 over volume, then pressure is directly proportional to 1 over volume. So this will be a proportional graph. This will be the y coordinate. 1 over v is the x coordinate. k will just be the gradient. So this will be a y equals to mx graph. m, which is the gradient, will just be equals to k. So we will have this relationship here. Pressure against 1 over volume. Straight line passing through origin, the gradient is given by k. Now let's go through one more example. What if I want to plot PV against P at constant temperature? Still at constant temperature, but now we are plotting a slightly different expression, pressure times volume against pressure. Now PV against P at constant temperature, as mentioned previously, PV equals to NRT. N is a constant, R is a constant, T is a constant, so PV is a constant. If PV is a constant, then essentially any value of P, PV will just be the constant term, it will just be equals to NRT. So what I'm expected to get is, I'll get a horizontal line, and the y-intercept will be equal to k. Some of us might find this a bit confusing, because how do I interpret PV equals to a constant term? It doesn't really look like a graph of y equals to mx. So we use this as a very simple example. If let's say I want you to plot a graph of y equals to 5, how will you draw a graph of y equals to 5? y equals to 5 is just simply a horizontal line and it intersects at y equals to 5 because in terms of interpretation, y equals to 5 means that if x is 0, y equals to 5. If x equals to 1, y equals to 5. If x equals to 10, y equals to 5. If x equals to 100, y is still equals to 5. That means regardless of the value for x, y will always be equal to 5, so it will be a horizontal line and it cuts the y-axis at y equals to 5. So if I translate this same idea to a PV against pressure graph, PV is a constant means that whatever value for P, PV will just be equals to K. P is 0, PV is K. P is 1, PV equals to K. So whatever value of P, PV will just be the same value, PV will just be equals to K. So it will be a horizontal line, and it cuts the y-axis or the PV-axis at K. And similarly, if I'm plotting a graph of PV against volume, it will be the same value. PV against volume, it will also be a horizontal line and it cuts the y-axis at k. Alright, so that was the discussion involving the ideal gas equation and how to make use of the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT, for graph sketching of an ideal gas. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.